Ignite. How the hell does it work? It's not super complicated, but the way you need to work with your partner mages to optimize for it kinda is. Let's go over the simple part first. This will be useful in solo gameplay or if you don't have enough mages to consistently keep your stacks up. The talent burns your target over 4 seconds for 40% of the damage your critical hit did. It does this in two separate ticks, two seconds apart. If another crit occurs between the first and the last tick, it will extend the ignite's duration by two seconds. Otherwise, and this is where it gets a little complicated, it will not extend the ignite's duration. Now, you don't lose a tick of ignite, think of it like this. I crit for 10 damage. Two seconds from now, the boss will burn for two damage, because that is 20% of how hard I hit. If you crit before this tick happens, it will batch your first ignite tick into my first ignite tick, and your second one into my second one. Here's a little graphic showing that. The red, green, and blue symbolize three separate crits over six seconds. The green happens too early and does not extend the ignite. You can see it ticks at the same time as the first hit, which is the red one. The blue crit hits during the last two seconds of the stack, so it does extend the ignite. Anyways, you will get 40% of your crit's damage, but the ignite stack may drop because you didn't extend it. Before this patch in 2020, you used to add 4 seconds from whenever the last crit occurred. But Blizzard hates you blue boys, so they had to fix this bug. But I digress, things are different now. You must crit between the first and second tick in order to extend ignite, so there's only a 2 second window. That's the easy part about ignite. Now for the part that impacts your strategy, because it's not like you can play around that 2 second window. Well, you kinda can by spamming Scorch ticks than the stacks. More on that later, though. Ignite allows up to five internal stacks. The first person to start a stack gets all the threat from Ignite, which is why you often see people Petri as mages. Anyways, the first five crits that build up a five stack are the only damage sources that impact how hard Ignite burns for. Well, besides debuffs on the boss. Now for a mechanic most people don't know about Ignite. This shit will kill your group's DPS if you mess it up. Let's say your fireballs hit for 5 when they don't crit, 10 when they do crit, and let's pretend you have a 100% damage modifier we're going to stack on top of this. I'm picking 100% because it's nice and round. It'll make the math easy, you'll see in a moment. So, your crits with this 100% damage amp would be for 20, right? You may think that if you got 5 crits that did 20 damage each back to back that your night ticks would look like this. 40% of 20 times 5 over 4 seconds, or 40 damage over 4 seconds, or 20 damage every tick. But actually, that's wrong, because the final stack, the 5th stack in an ignite, has its damage modifiers rolled into that ignite stack forever. Yes. So instead of it being 20 every 2 seconds, it's 40. And if you kept this stack rolling the entire boss fight, it would be 40 on that last tick of the fight, even though you literally shoot a fireball every 3 seconds that hits for a 5 when it doesn't crit, or a 10 when it does crit. Yeah, the ignite stack is like 3 times your DPS. What would happen if instead the 5th hit didn't have the modifier? but all the other hits did. Then the math is like this, 40% of 20 times 4 plus 10. This is equal to 36 over 4 seconds, or 18 a tick. No modifier was present on the final tick, so we don't get to double dip. Wow, not critting on that last hit cost you 22 damage per tick. Now you only hit for 18 per tick. It literally more than halved your damage. Let's flip the script so this stands out more. What if you only had the modifier up for the final stack, but not for the first four? Then it would look like this. 40% of 10 times 4 plus 20. Now, this number might seem smaller. This is equal to 24 over 4 seconds, but the modifier was up on the final hit, so we apply it. And we go to 48 over 4 seconds, or 24 a tick. A 6 damage increase, or a 33% DPS increase if you want to look at that 18 from before. Yes, that's right. The last stack in your Ignite counts for more than all the others put together if you can snapshot a modifier into it. 
This means if you screw up your PI timing, you will destroy your damage output. Great, so that's a lot, but how do we act on it? The specifics of the damage breakdown obviously matter very little, but these are the key insights you need. The final stack of Ignite needs to have every percent modifier behind it possible. The final stack matters more than all the other stacks combined. Any crit that occurs just before the final tick will extend Ignite by two seconds. Basically, the crits need to occur while the Ignite has two seconds left or less. And finally, debuff modifiers of course double dip too since they apply to the spell that generates the Ignite and the Ignite's damage itself. Here's the final thing some people won't know. You can have a partial resist on a critical spell hit. So you could have a situation where you want to drop the Ignite stack if you got a super big partial resist in a couple of the stacks. But remember, you cannot give up snapshotting your fifth stack with your modifiers for any reason. Let's cover the mage opener. All mages need to help stack up improved Scorch. It's pointless for anyone not to help because if any of the Scorches did get a crit, you're gonna need to drop the Ignite stacks anyways, and likely one of you will get a crit. If only five Scorches are cast and everyone is hit capped, meaning each mage only has a 1% chance for their spell cast to be resisted, then you have a 10% chance to be missing a stack of Scorch. I bet that's surprising you thought it would be like 5%. Here's the math though. It uses the binomial distribution formula. No, you don't need to understand this. That's not going to stop me from explaining it. 1 minus the probability of a spell landing to the power of the amount of spells you need to land. The exponent is 2 times 5 because, and here's the little secret, Scorch could resist or the debuff application for improved Scorch could also separately resist. This is why it's way more likely to not give 5 stacks in 5 casts than you may imagine, even if you only have a 1% chance to resist. This is basically the same situation as if you needed 10 Scorch stacks, but the debuff itself could not be resisted, just the initial spell cast. So we got 1 minus 0.99 to the 10th power, which is 10%. Here's a table that shows the probability of missing a stack as it relates to the number of spells cast. 5 has a 10% chance, 6 is a half a percent, 7 is 0.025%. Basically, each additional cast makes it 20 times more likely that you're going to get to 5. How do you apply this in reality? Well, so long as you have at least 3 mages and they're all spell hit capped, Everyone just casts two Scorches each on pull, and then you basically have no real chance of not getting to five stacks, and then you go into the rest of your opener. Three mages would have a 99.5% chance of having all the stacks up if they each did it twice. Here's the optimal opener, but you won't want to do it, and I'll explain why in just a moment. After the Scorches, you could have your mages fire blast and then AFK for one second, pop all their CDs, call for PIs from their assigned priests, and then begin spamming fireball. But this is really, really easy to mess up. Think about this. What if one mage is late? They cast Scorch one second after you. Now your fireball will hit while their ignite stack from Scorches is still up. Maybe you ruin everyone's parse. Or the other way this goes sideways is just like this. Someone forgets to wait one second after their fire blast. Now they have a fireball hit one second earlier, and so they roll a bad ignite stack. Either of these situations could end up with you losing 50% or more of your potential ignite damage over the fight duration. Way to throw in the first five seconds. You're so smart doing the optimal strat. Hell, also you need your priests to respond super fast to your whisper macros if you're doing this optimized bullshit because your PI call happens when you cast fire blast. So they have four seconds to react. GG Parse, do you trust all of your priests and all of your mages to do this right in a 4 second window every single time? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> as a tank, I wouldn't trust the mages in my raid group to wash my fucking car, and I can't trust most of the priests to MC Resuvius. Fuck that shit, we got a better opener for 99% of raid groups. Make a macro that does Frostbolt and calls for PI by whispering your assigned priest. So you'll go Scorches into your Frostbolt whisper macro, which you'll spam so that way your priest actually sees it, and then you're going to hit your macro that pops all your CDs, like trinkets, whatever bullshit, and finally, you're just going to hit fireball until the boss dies. This is a way safer opener, because what if one of the mages is slow? You'll still have a 0% chance of keeping Scorch crits in your ignite stack, because the cast time of Frostbolt plus fireball is like 6 seconds, and ignite lasts 4. So as long as no one is 2 seconds late, 
you're going to be good every single time. Now, this leaves one final problem, though, that really sucks to manage. If you don't have, like, nine mages, you'll have Ignite Drop, even though you're all spamming Fireball. Because remember, you only have a two-second window where if your spell crit hits, it'll extend Ignite by a mere two seconds. The way you beat this is having some number of your mages spam Scorch the entire fight so that they keep the Ignite rolling. For most raid groups, you're going to want all the mages to spam Scorch. Maybe one of them can do Fireball. They could take turns doing Fireball. It would make you do a little more personal DPS, but if the Ignite stack ever drops, everyone's going to get a shit parse. Your Scorch spammers will usually only get a single Scorch off within the two second window they have, which is why you'll need a lot of them. So you'll drop stacks all the time with just a single guy doing it unless he had like a 100% chance to crit. But it's not all bad news. Scorch has a 1.5 second cast, so it has a 43% spell power coefficient. This is because nearly all spells in the game have their coefficient decided exactly like this. Cast time divided by 3.5. So 1.5 divided by 3.5 is the coefficient for Scorch. Because you can cast two Scorches every three seconds, you can think of it like this. You'll get three divided by 3.5 times your spell power worth of damage every three seconds if you spam Scorch, or 85% of your spell power every three seconds, plus the base damage times two, which is equal to 520. So 520 plus 85% of your spell power every three seconds. Now, let's compare that to the DPS of Fireball Spam. Fireball has a talent that makes it cast faster, but this won't reduce the coefficient. So it's still 3.5 divided by 3.5, or 1 damage per spell power. In 3 seconds, you'll cast a single fireball. It will deal your spell power's worth of damage plus its base damage, which is 640. Basically, Ignite Spam will do 640 minus 520 less damage per 3 seconds from the spell's base damage differences. This is 40 DPS per mage. And then each mage will do 15% less DPS per spell power portion of their DPS. I know, it sucks but it means your ignites will be so much better. Honestly, just have every mage spam Scorch after you get a thick ignite stack going. I mean, you want to drop ignite stacks like this after all? I really assume you do not want that at all. Here, I'll put a montage of that shit in the background. Anytime you see the damage go down or the name associated with the ignite change, that means the stack drop, either because of a lack of crits or ignite is one of the lower priority debuffs in the game and it can get pushed off by stupid shit like paladins trying to consecrate, corruptions from warlocks, or shadow or deaths, oh my god. Anyways, I'm Jake, and I want to convince you that I know things, so that way you click on all my shit and YouTube keeps serving you videos about how the game works. Just remember, you're not immune to propaganda, and I will infiltrate your thoughts over time, rather you want me to or not.